welcome to all of you dear students today's lecture is fundamental components of taxonomy so far this introduction is concerned taxonomy is a greek word it is made of two words taxis means arrangement and nomia means method it is a practice and science of classification taxonomy uses taxonomic units known as taxa singular taxon taxonomy is basically concerned with the classification of organisms before attempting to classify various organisms it is necessary to identify and name them a particular group of individuals unique in several respects is assigned to a species these species are grouped into genera genera into families family into orders and the process continues till all the species have been arranged classified and the single largest most inclusive group the taxonomic activities of humans are not restricted to living organisms only humans learn to identify describe name and classify foods clothes books games vehicles religions professions and any other objects that they come across or influence their life the process begins and ends with life there are more than 1/3 of a million species of green plants known to man today this information having been accumulated through efforts of several millenniums although man has been classifying plants since the advent of civilization taxonomy was recognized as a formal subject only in 1813 by ap dicando for a long time plant taxonomy was considered as the science of identifying naming and classifying plants since identification and nomenclature are important prerequisites for any classification taxonomy is often defined as the science dealing with the study of classification including its basis principles rules and procedures the scope of taxonomy has however been enlarged in recent years to make taxonomy and systematics synonymous sipson in 1961 defined systematics as a scientific study of the kinds and diversity of organisms and of any and all relationships between them it was recognized as a more inclusive field of study concerned with the study of diversity of plants and their meaning classification and evolution realization of the fact that a good number of authors still consider taxonomy to be more inclusive one this lead recent authors to prefer the term systematics to include discussions about all the recent developments in their works modern approach to systematics aims at reconstructing the entire chronicle of evolutionary events which ultimately aims at discovering all the branches of evolutionary tree of life and to document all the changes and to describe all the species which form the tips of all these branches this won't be possible unless information is consolidated in the form of an embedded system of classification this however is again impossible without clear understanding of the basic identification and nomenclature methods thus a broader definition of taxonomy to coincide with systematics recognizes it as the study and description of variation in organisms the investigation of causes and consequence of this variation and the manipulation of the data obtained to produce a system of classification now the students will discuss the fundamental components of taxonomy in detail the fundamental components of taxonomy which help to develop an ideal system of classification are the procedures of description identification nomenclature classification and phylogeny these components are discussed as number one description the description of any taxon involves listing its features by recording the appropriate character states a shortened description thus consisting of only those taxonomic characters which help in separating a taxon from other closely related taxa forms the diagnosis and the characters are termed as diagnostic characters the diagnostic characters for a taxon determines its circumscription 
the description is recorded in a set pattern. For example, habitat, stem, flower, sepals, stamens, carpels, fruits, etc., as shown in the figure. For each character, an appropriate character state is listed. For example, flower color may thus be red, yellow, white, etc. The description is recorded in semi technical language using specific terms for each character state to enable a proper documentation of the data. Whereas the fresh specimen can be described conveniently. The dry specimen need to be softened in boiling water or in a wetting agent before these could be described. Softening is often essential for the section of flowers in order to study their details. Now identification. Identification or determination is recognizing an unknown specimen by comparing it with an already known taxon and assigning a correct rank and position in an extent classification. In practice, it involves finding a name for an unknown specimen. This may be achieved by visiting a herbarium and comparing unknown specimens with the duly identified specimens stored in the herbarium. Alternatively, the specimen may also be sent to an expert in the field who can help in its identification. Identification can also be achieved by using various types of literature such as florals, monographs or manuals and making use of identification keys provided in these sorts of literature. After the unknown specimen has been identified with the help of a key, the identification can neither be confirmed by comparison with a detailed description of various organs of a taxon provided in the literature source. A method that is becoming popular over the recent years involves taking a photograph of the plant and its parts. Uploading this picture on the website and informing the members of the appropriate electronic experts or mixed groups who can see the photograph at the website and send their comments to the inquirer. Members of such organization can thus help each other in identification in a much efficient manner. Now nomenclature. Nomenclature deals with the determination of a correct name of a taxon. There are different rules of naming different groups of living organs. Nomenclature of plants including fungi is governed by the International Code of Botanical Nomenclature ICBN through its rules and recommendations. This table shows some binomial scientific names of some plants and animals. The botanical code is updated after every six years. Helps in picking up a single correct name out of numerous scientific names available for a taxon with a particular circumscription, position and rank. To avoid inconvenient name changes for certain taxa, a list of conserved binomial names are provided in the code. Cultivated plants are governed by the International Code of Nomenclature of Cultivated Plants ICNCP, largely based on botanical code which is slightly a modified form. Names of animals are governed by International Code of Zoological Nomenclature ICZN. Those are bacteria by International Code of Nomenclature or bacteria ICMB, now called Bacteriological Code BC. A separate group of viruses named the International Code of Virus Classification and Nomenclature. This draft has been developed from the most recent rules of virus classification and nomenclature by the International Committee for the Taxonomy of Viruses ICT. With the onset of electronic revolution and the need to have a common database of living organisms for global communication. A common uniform code is being attempted. The draft biocode is the first public expression of these objectives. The first draft was prepared by 1995 after successive reviews. The fourth draft named draft biocode 1997 prepared by the International Committee for Binomial Nomenclature was published by 
Jupiter et al. 1998 and is now available on the web. The last decade of 20th century also saw the development of a rankless phylo code based on the concept of phylogenetic systematics. It omits all ranks except species and clades based on the concept of recognition of monophyletic groups. The latest version of phylo code, July 2002, is also available on the web. Now we will discuss its classification. Classification is the arrangement of organisms into groups on the basis of similarities. The groups are in turn assembled into more inclusive groups until all the organisms have been assembled in a single most inclusive group. In sequence of increasing inclusiveness, the groups are assigned to a fixed hierarchy of categories such as species, genus, family, order, class and division. The final arrangement constituting a system of classification. The process of classification includes assigning appropriate position and rank to a new taxon, dividing a taxon into smaller units, uniting two or more taxa into one, transferring its position from one group to another, and altering its rank. Once established, a classification provides an important mechanism of information storage, retrieval and usage. This ranked system of classification is popularly known as a linear system. Taxonomic entities are classified in different fashions. One artificial classification it is based on arbitrary easily observable characters such as habit, color, number, form and similar features. The sexual system of linear which fits in this category utilizes the number of stamens for primary classification of the flowering plants. Number next is natural classification which uses overall similarity in grouping taxa, a concept initiated by M. Aronson and culminating in the exclusively used classification of Bentham and Hooker. Natural system of 18th and 19th centuries used morphology in delimiting the overall similarity. The concept of overall similarity has undergone considerable refinement in recent years. As against the sole morphological features as indicators in similarity in natural systems, overall similarity is now judged on the basis of features derived from all the available fields of taxonomic information, that is phonetic relationship. Now phonetic classification makes the use of overall similarity in terms of phonetic relationships based on the data from all available sources such as morphology, anatomy, embryology, phytochemistry, ultrastructure and in fact all other fields of study. Phonetic classification was strongly advocated by Smith and Sokol but did not find much favor with major systems of classification of higher plants. Phonetic relationships has however been very prominently used in modern phylogenetic systems to decide the realignment with the system of classification. Now we will see phylogenetic classification. It is based on the evolutionary descent of a group of organisms. The relationships depicted either through a phylogram, phylogenetic tree or a cladogram. This type of classification is constructed with the premise in mind that all the descendants of a common ancestor should be placed in a same group. The groups should be monophyletic. If some descendants have been left out, uh, rendering the group paraphyletic, these are brought back into the group to make it monophyletic. Merger of Apocynaceae with Scalpidaceae and merger of Brascaceae with Capridaceae in recent classifications. Similarly, if the group is polyphyletic, that is with the members from more than one phyletic line. It is split to create monophyletic taxa, genus, area split into area and ratio. This approach is known as cladistics and is practiced by cladistics. Now, evolutionary taxonomic classification, it differs from phylogenetic classification in that the gaps in the various patterns of phylogenetically adjacent groups 
are regarded as more important in recognizing groups. It accepts leaving out certain descendants of a common ancestor, that is, recognizing paraphyletic groups. If the gaps are not significant, thus failing to provide a true picture of the genealogical history, the characters considered to be of significance in the evolution and the classification based on these are dependent on experts, authority and intuition of systematics. Such classifications have been advocated by Simpson 1961, Ashlock 1979, Mayer and Ashlock 1991 and Stussy 1990. This approach is known as electicism, is touched by electricists. Now, phylogeny. Phylogeny is the study of genealogy and evolutionary history of a taxonomic group. Genealogy is the study of ancestral relationships and lineages. Relationships are depicted through a diagram better known as phylogram. Since the commonly used term, cladogram is more appropriately used for this diagram, constructed through cladistic methodology. A phylogram is a branching diagram based on the degree of advancement, apomorphy, in the descendants, the longest branch representing the most advanced group. This is distinct from a phylogenetic tree in which vertical scale represents a geological time scale and all living organisms reach the top with the primitive ones near the center and advanced ones near the periphery. Monophyletic groups including all descendants of a common ancestor are recognized and form entities in a classification system. Paraphyletic groups wherein some descendants of a common ancestor are left out are reunited. Polyphyletic groups with more than one common ancestor are split to form monophyletic groups. Phyletic information may often help in determining uh, phylogenetic relationships. This way, I think we have completed all the parameters of our today's lecture and I hope all of you might have well understood it. Thank you.